on bits. Whatever you want. A nice shiny new beat on bits. Beat on bits, a real winner. There's always room for beat on bits. Just gotta love beat on bits. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 13 of the Beat on Bits podcast. This is my show where I talk about passions, projects, and playlists with some pretty cool people. Today I have with me Alvin, who is a entrepreneur, self-proclaimed YouTube watcher, and ball is life. Yeah, ball is life. Say hi, Alvin. Hi, everyone. My name's Alvin. (laughs) Nice to see you. Hope to see you guys again. Yeah. I mean, I I came on this uh, podcast because I self-promoted myself on one of uh, Brandon's YouTube videos. Exactly. So so here I am. (laughs) Yeah, so my name's Brandon, and I'm the host of the show, and my goal for the podcast and the YouTube channel and everything is to find out some more about what people are passionate about, uh, show you a, a hidden side from people that you might not know, or maybe you do know them and you just don't know these certain things. And also to promote having these conversations with people who are in your life and people who you care about. So that's my goal for this show. And let's just jump into it. So we'll get into some things that we're both passionate about. Me being this podcast more so lately. And um, I'm really passionate about getting your feedback and stuff. And Alvin actually commented on one of my videos, like he just mentioned, saying that he wanted to be on the show. So mm-hmm. Yeah. I hit him up and he's like, yeah, let's do it. And he was so passionate about appearing on the show that he's actually flying out to China tomorrow and made time for us to be on the show today. So that's some dedication. <laughs> no, no. Thank you for having me. Of course. So um, let's talk about some of these titles that you um, wanted me to call you by here. We have entrepreneur and YouTube watcher and, and ball is life. So, so I guess starting with entrepreneur, uh, I mean, really, I just don't have a job so I'm just running around you know like a headless chicken um, a little bit of background so I, I, I graduated as an electrical engi- engineering degree from the U of A um, and during my school school time there I came across a, a project that utilized a new manufacturing process to produce a new uh, produce a filtration material called activated carbon and ever since that I've been uh, trying to commercialize the technology and Obviously, over the, over over the last few years, we've run in a, a few difficulties. We made a lot of progress, but still, uh, things are going quite slow. But hopefully, uh, we're we're able to solve this uh, by my trip to China as well. That's one of the goals is to hopefully we can raise some money uh, with the Chinese investors o- o- over there that they're more interested in clean tech technologies there. So, if you are a Chinese <laughs> investor listening to the show. <laughs> We got somewhere to Please put your money. Into. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, what's your kind of um, what made you come up with the idea for the company, and uh, what are you trying to? Uh, what problem are you trying to solve with it? So, um, the, the technology is essentially a, ma- a new manufacturing pro- process that is more uh, energy efficient than, than the traditional process, and. Because because of growing environmental concerns, there's a growing demand for for activated carbon, which is a relatively simple uh, material that you that captures unwanted harmful um, emissions or uh, uh, pollutants. Then it then it then it can just be recycled and 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 and, and, and reused. So uh, the traditional way of producing it could obviously produ- uh, uh, produce produce. Uh, greenhouse gas in itself mm. where our process uses electricity uh, mm. uh, by the way of microwave and we believe that that's the future in, in terms of producing this uh, th- this filtration material so we so w- when I was working on on a, a business plan course uh, when the, this technology was brought up we I really saw this as something that I could that, that I could jump jump in and during that time I oh, I uh, that's, that's, that's a first time that I found out about entrepreneurship because when I was in high school and, and even first few years in university all I thought was oh you have to just go to school get a job and that's how your career goes you know entrepreneurship is something that's really far really uh, a mystery to me I always thought people that have a wealth of knowledge can only those people can start uh, can become an entrepreneur but then when I was in university I went to a, 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 a startup weekend school <coughs> And, 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 and really there I learned you don't need any experience to become an entrepreneur. You can just start and the best time is to start when you 
when you are when you're out of, fresh out of school or even when you were in school to sort of test the water so instantly at that time uh i knew that was what i, what I wanted to do for my life so and this is sort of the first opportunity that came across so i sort of just jumped on it i mean there were multiple times where we were hitting you know difficulties roadblocks and things seems it's not gonna work out <clears throat> but then i the as as you as you you know uh, cram through it, work on it, and, and slowly things make progress. Obviously, things could still fail anytime, but that's just the nature of of entrepreneurship. And I just I just hope I I learn I can learn as much as I can from this and, and yeah. take that experience and move forward with my next venture. Hopefully, for sure. Do, so do you do you see yourself uh, sticking with the current company for quite a while? Do you think it'll still um, roll into something a lot bigger or are you kind of uh, just taking it day by day and then what happens happens and you have other ideas if this doesn't work out kind of thing um, so my idea on that changes sort of day by day sometimes oh, okay. when things aren't see, uh, are looking so 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 great I, I, I'm thinking about other ideas but even when things are going great I'm still thinking about ideas but I, I'm, I'm more committed at that time so right, right. if you logically think just with taking out any emotions I think I, I want this to succeed mm -hmm. but then you know if, if things don't go well you have to assess it you know, logically uh, with a clear head that if things aren't going well should I keep contributing more time to it so that's one of the hardest thing in entrepreneurship is you know sometimes it's giving up your what you've worked on for so long yeah and that that you've re really received not, uh, no return in terms of financial gains but you've gained in the return uh, a wealth of experience from the experience so yeah um i'll have to sort of assess that going forward but uh right now i, I want this to succeed so i'm just, i'm still focusing on most of my energies in in that is this like your first um, like entrepreneurial uh, expedition? Or? Yeah, yeah. This is my, my, my first entrepreneurial expedition, and and because it was is my first, I, I didn't want to give up too easily. Yeah. So how long has it been now? Um, cool. It's been a long, it's almost three and a half years now. Oh wow. Yeah. So it, 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 it's taken a long time, but I also learn learn a lot. And another reason, that, well, another lesson that I learned is that you know tech. Technology development is quite, is just really hard unless you have a lot of resources. It is it, it's probably not something that I'll touch again. So oh. for my future ventures, I'll probably deal more with uh, service type of uh, uh, ventures where you don't you your your business don't rely too heavily on whether your technology works or not. Mm -hmm. Where where uh, certain uh, product focus. Um, ventures you you take existing technology and you combine them and, and package them into a product right and then you focus on branding and marketing that product whereas mm. my my business is, is a lot of trial and error in in the lab and and if if things technology don't work out well you, you really can't do anything with it so yeah that's true <laughs> that, that's a really good point actually like i think especially with technology startups the unknowns are even like that much more than what a another kind of uh, startup would be because um, it just reminded me of something like one of the podcasts I'm listening to is called invested the rule one podcast and like uh, what successful investors look for in like good businesses and healthy strong businesses is one like competitive durable advantage yeah. otherwise known as like the moat around your castle like the water mm -hmm. around the castle yeah, yeah. and with technology it's really hard to like have that advantage because of the rate that it does advance at and Mm -hmm. how much time and effort you have to put into it mm -hmm. so it, it's definitely really tough so you have uh mad respect for keeping up with <laughs> it <laughs> yeah i'll just madness is in, in itself <laughs> yeah so so what are your plans for um going to china related to the business so this this this, this time my trip to china is mainly to uh, meet with some of the uh, chinese investors and hopefully uh also talk to some of the government uh, people where they 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 right now they're, they're really focusing on um, developing technologies domestically so because before as you know China has always been a manufacturing uh, country and, and a lot of like uh, 
technology stealing was happening but now they because now they've they've had they've having the money they can put they can throw at you know new technology development so they they, they they're really looking at a lot of the technical expert uh, experts uh, uh, high quality personnel from overseas to come back to China and develop technology there and grow it there so um, with, with that being said I, I kind of want to go back and talk see if there are uh, technology funds that 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 could be available to mm. us you know, you know and and what, one of the biggest market that for, for our company uh, it, it has been China all along just because the amount of uh, pollution that they've been uh, producing due to industrialization and and, and, and and the rapid growth of their economy yeah so just talking to investors hoping to raise some capital uh, uh, create some network connections there and, and and see where it goes so you have a couple of connections already in a couple of cities there right well mainly in Shenzhen so I have two uh, they used to be uh, one is uh, one of my high school friends uh, Albert actually you know so he's oh doing, yeah yeah so he's doing uh, a lot of entrepreneurial work and oh he, really so he he, he he has some connections and I have another university friend that uh, he, he basically did the same thing that I'm trying to do so he, he had the technology of development at UFA took it took it over there to China got the fundings and now it's developing it in China so that, that that's another connection that I'm trying to uh, uh, be hooked up with and, and hopefully talk to some some government government funding agencies nice do you do you have any idea what the f- like government of fund um, government fund availability is already like over there like is it pretty good and pretty they're pretty invested in people like developing technology within the country yeah well, uh, I haven't really talked to any actual investors there but uh, like from um, what you hear, from, from what I hear, it, it, it's it, it's very person driven. So where here, a lot of the funding applications you can do through just uh, paper applications. Yeah, they don't need to meet you. Where in there, they 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 have they want to see you in person. Oh, and, and so you have to go through like interviews and stuff. Yeah, so that's why I'm going back to hopefully to 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 be there and, and ex- explain what, what we're trying to do. Oh, nice. Yeah. What's your kind of general outlook on it so far? Are you feeling pretty positive about it or is it going to be really rough? See, the thing with me is I'm always too hopeful to think for some time. So uh, one thing I realized even when I was running uh, uh, Autocarbon, the, my startup, a lot of times whenever we have any little progress or even just a new connection that 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 could lead a, lead to a, a a a new opportunity i always become instantly very hopeful and mm-hmm. with the outlook uh, and but then but then not really assessing the the situation that is it, it's not as hopeful as i pictured it to be so a little so, too optimistic yeah it's, I, I tend to fall into that trap a little bit but then um it, the good the good good part for that is I get motivated easily, I guess, for yeah. for, for 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 a little hopefulness. So uh, this time, I tried not to be too hopeful, but just try to be try to be positive at the mm-hmm. same time. Yeah, it's one day at a time. Yeah, one day at a time. Just it's not going to be too life changing based on one piece of news. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. So what's the? Uh, I guess it's it's kind of an interesting time to be going there amidst like what's happening between China and the U.S. in terms of. The trade war is that they're they're mm-hmm. doing now. So, mm-hmm. do you know anyone um, from any like industries or just friends or family living there that have has anything changed basically with the way that they look at the U.S. or North America or like how have relations been? Do you have any feeling on that so far? Well, for, for from what I've experienced, most Chinese people have a love hate relationship with the U.S. Mm-hmm. They they love you know what us represents but also kind of hate it in a way that i say competition in Mm -hmm. a way because obviously from just recent history you know 50 years ago when uh uh, communists took power in china they were sort of you know the total opposite with the yeah what the us represented capitalism i mean it's but then, if you see all the all the all the um, 
best people that come out of China, they all ended up in the U.S. <coughs> so, and, 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 and I think I read a survey that most people that want to move out of China, you know, chose the U.S. To, to, as their destination. So right, right. it's really a love-hate relationship. And, but at the end of the day, I think it just sort of comes down to competition. Mm. And it almost sounds like they like what the U.S. is uh, producing, but they don't like who they are. <laughs> Yeah, 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 kind of, kind of, kind of similar, similar to that. It's, it's kind, of, yeah, it's kind of like you have a you have a friend that's that's really you know attractive, that's good at everything, but then you're also jealous at the same time. Oh yeah, fair and enough. And you want to you want to compete with them to try to be better in certain areas. Yeah, yeah. Your friend. So it's, it's kind of like, it's like rivals situation. almost. Yeah, rivals, but you but you're still you still you you're still good friends. So fair enough. Yeah. That's true. Well, yeah, because I was looking into this a bit today just to kind of get a, a better idea with the numbers between, like, the economies and stuff. And, like, both U.S. and, US and China are, like, the number one and two economy size in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's and, natural the yeah. first two to start butting heads in, in yeah. one way or another. Yeah. I just I just hope, uh, you know, they, that they work it out. It's, it's a healthy competition. It's because, it's you know, if, if, I mean, say, like I always compare this to basketball. You, 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 when when you're on the court, you see each other as enemies. But, uh, but, but you know deep down, you're just competing for for the game, right? You, you, mm -hmm. You're competing for for the betterment. I hope they're competing for the betterment of of everyone. But then, you can it can turn sideways sometimes. So as yeah. hopefully that that doesn't happen. We need a referee to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, call the shots. Mm -hmm, yeah, I yeah. Mean, there's also a big, uh, uh, um, uh, I guess, gap between how your just normal, regular day people feel about a, a certain nation and and the, and how the government treats that mm -hmm. that nation. So, like in, in China's case, again, is your everyday people. They really, they really like U.S. Like there's they have nothing really against it. Um, but on the political side. I guess uh, if you're a leader of a country, you'll have to stand up for your own country's benefits and, and other countries are really competing with you. So in the case of China and US, they've been top two uh, econ economy in the world. They want to do things for their own own country's benefits. So they sort of ha kind of have to compete in a lot of the areas. So the yeah. trade war is as a result of that is you know china is catching up to the u.s and they're they're being more influenced in certain economic areas where yeah. u.s sort of wanna wanna uh you know wanna like get stay on top and stay on hold top. them back so, kind of thing so that's that's where the the competition comes from yeah that makes a lot of sense and then uh, i guess just to kind of touch on a couple of the things that have happened lately um with the trade war and because like some of the headlines i know are really Kind of confusing or misleading so it might be good to just clear a little bit of it up mm -hmm. mainly the u.s slapping 50 billion dollars of tariffs onto china which is not as it sounds exactly it's more like out of 50 billion dollars worth of imported goods from china to the u.s there's uh increases on the tariffs on those goods of 50 percent in certain industries mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's kind of over sensationalized in a lot of media outlets making it almost seem like um china had it so good and now uh u.s is just like kind of beating them down or on the flip side is um like oh it's such a good move for the u.s because it was unfair before yeah. but yeah it's basically just throwing around numbers that don't mean a whole lot to the everyday person yeah so definitely. read more into it and don't just read the headlines. Yeah. Especially with April Fools a couple days ago. <laughs> so many people share things like, "Oh my god, I can't believe this shit happened." And then you click the article and at the bottom it literally says like April Fools. <laughs> no one bothered to read. Yeah, it's it's stupid. So, yeah. even after April Fools, read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Cuz it's like Alan was saying, it's more of like a rivalry thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully they don't want to start any wars. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the, especially nowadays, the politics, the, the economic uh, trading, all that, the, those things are so complex. And, and unless you're an expert in that area, none of those really make sense uh, to you. Like, for, for example, just the trade word itself, 
on the surface, like the media, how, how they portray it, oh, U.S. is putting a tariff on a lot of the goods coming in China. But then they're probably doing it for a lot, for many reasons that you don't understand at all. So it, once once you learn more about it and understand the reason behind it, it actually it, it might actually make a lot of sense for U.S. to do it. Yeah, so sure. it might not be a bad thing for them to do it. It, it, might, it just it might look bad on the surface, but. It, the reason like beneath it might might make a lot of sense because i mean we, we all we all we all think uh the politicians are you know arrogance and, and and making a lot of bad decisions but trust me they know a lot more than what they're doing than they let out because yeah. nowadays everything is image based so mm. even though the government's giving off this image yeah <clears throat> Or the or the media is painting an image for the government, like in Trump's uh, case. I mean, just from watching him on TV, you think how can this guy ever be that successful? I mean, becoming yeah. the POTUS. I mean, <clears throat> but trust me, he's a lot smarter beneath what his, what he lets off on the surface. It's just that you know, in order for him to achieve certain goals, like for example, getting the doesn't the votes from certain certain demographics, the voter that he wants, he has to act a certain way talk a certain way so those people can relate to him but if he actually explain some of the things that he actually uh wants to do uh in the political terms that they're involved with mm -hmm. most people won't understand because you don't have that that knowledge so yeah so he has to come up and say oh i want to build a wall maybe actually he is building a wall but then but then the reason behind it are, are way more in-depth than just people think yeah i guess it goes both ways in that yeah, if if he has to talk to this certain way to appeal to certain people, that's mm -hmm. gonna piss a lot of other people off too, mm -hmm. because they're like, yeah, these people, like, uh, if we just take the example of like Middle America, like the rural farming uh, states, like the Rust Belt, they're <laughs> yeah. like kind of years behind the rest of everyone, like economically and uh, in terms of social issues and stuff. So I think a lot of people are really annoyed that they're he's appealing to them because like mm -hmm. they're so far back. It's like, why don't you just um, like rewind everything we've done for the past like 20, yeah. 30 years. And just... But the results show that he made the right decision because they are, those people actually were oppressed for the longest time. They don't have a, a, a media outlet that can let their voice heard. So, and, and they represent a majority of the, of the voters in America, it turns mm -hmm. out. So, so he appealed to these, those, those you know, uh, oppressed voters and the result shown he actually won so really can you say he's he, he, he's he's dumb for, for saying those things it's hard, yeah it's hard to say it really depends on who you ask and and yeah. then like kind of um before we started recording we talked a bit about um how nothing is really binary like nothing is yes no or black and white um and then that kind of led you to have um I guess kind of like go in a lot of different directions with what you're pursuing and what you're interested in. <laughs> and this kind of seems like definitely in politics, I think it really is not a matter of black and white, left, right, mm -hmm. up, down. It's so there's so many things uh, that influence a person's reason for like making certain decisions or mm -hmm. passing certain laws and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's kind of frustrating to see what happens sometimes especially when you don't know the full story and even if you do know the full story and know that they did make a really bad decision you're just like mm -hmm. yeah, yeah exactly i mean especially nowadays with so many news popping up everywhere people can't afford the time to really too too deep into it sometimes they just read a title and right away they make they make up a opinion in their head yeah. oh this is bad that person's this politician's doing bad things but things are a lot, a lot more complicated than that so instead of saying instead of saying oh that decision is bad or that politician is doing bad you know my my approach is always okay this has to be a reason why he's doing that this has to be benefits of why he's doing what what seeming seemingly like bad decisions mm -hmm. so Kind of, if you take that kind of approach, you don't you don't make rush this uh, rash decisions and 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 sort of take an extreme uh, point of view. Yeah, and and I believe it, it will reduce a lot lot more conflicts. <clears throat> yeah, I, I wanna I wanna throw in a quote from uh, you, do you know Headhunters like the hard style DJ? 
Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he has a song called Colors, and then uh, the lyric is like, when you find that life is neither black nor white, you'll see colors. Oh, that's just, that's, that's deep, a, man. That's deep. That's <laughs> deep. So yeah, keep that in mind. And then I think it is, it's really tough to catch yourself making that decision though. Because even for me, like when it was the US election time and it was like down to Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, yeah. I was talking with my mom and then she was talking about like, oh yeah, Trump's a really good businessman. And then I found myself saying like, oh yeah, but Hillary's got this track record in my mind. I'm like, I don't even know what I just said. <laughs> and then I'm like, Thinking back, like, where did this come from? Oh, yeah, they, they said that on, like, so many media outlets. I got to stop watching so much of this crap. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of your opinion is sort of based on your, your subliminal message that the media is, you know, <clears throat> putting out. So, um, I mean, it's easy to, to hate on a guy like Trump just by, you know, okay, oh, he took a negative stance on the LGBT community, you know, he's pro-gun or... Or he's a greedy businessman, right? It's easy to hate on, hate on someone when you see a bad quality in them. But then, if you if you really spend the time to try to find a good quality in them, you might take a different opinion. So I don't like like even for me, I, a lot of times I fall into the trap that oh, if I that guy I don't like that guy for for certain certain reasons. But mm -hmm. then if I actually spend the time to learn more about that person, I might I might turn out to understand that person more. So yeah. It, 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 it's it, yeah I mean a lot of times it's easy to, to to make a rash decision and be, be extreme sometimes yeah. yeah for sure and it's it's hard to see uh, past what you really don't like in order to proceed further down the road anyway yeah well yeah. it's getting really deep guys yeah so uh, one thing I wanted to actually <laughs> ask you about is like uh, uh, with the change in constitution in China oh, yeah. going back there with uh, the current president because he's only been in since like 2013 right yeah so he's been in 2013 I think he's serving his second term right now yeah and it's funny that you brought this up uh, I found out this this message in a very uh, awkward setting I would True. say so I was helping out one of my friend uh, he uh, with a um, political campaign so it's about, oh. uh, the, the Stephen Mandel campaign Stephen oh, Mandel used yeah. to be the, uh, the mayor of Edmonton, Edmonton. Yeah. and 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 then I think since last year he decided to run uh, run for the leader for the Alberta party yeah so Alberta party is a, 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 a new party where he they are promoting sort of the middle ground between the conservative and NDP which are sort of um, too too extreme yeah sort of too extreme on the political it's, spectrum it's kind of strange because i always thought the the this, this the spectrum here was like you have liberal all the way here and then conservative all the way in the right but is was liberal supposed to be more middle and ndp supposed to be more left than they are well i think and this is my my humble opinion like i don't know too much about politics mm -hmm. and I, 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 I didn't spend too much time getting involved but i think conservative was in, in in office for a long time. Oh yeah, in Alberta for they sure. Were, and then they were so you no know, pro oil and gas. Yeah, they were doing well. But then when the gas price dropped and the economy was doing bad. Yeah. And the conservative wasn't doing much to change to, to help change that. Yeah. So everyone just grew tired. It's sort of how how Trump got like it's everyone got so tired of mad at the current government. The current so government was, yeah. like like politicians like Hillary, they just pick someone that's totally opposite from them yeah, so NDP yeah. I think at that time was all, totally opposite from, totally yeah, opposite from conservatives so they just went they just went and chose NDP but then again when you when you swing from left to right all of a sudden then NDP comes in power and then a lot of people realize oh what they're doing is not it's not working either so this here comes the Alberta party even though they've been around for, for a long time but they never had a seat in the in yeah the, in the yeah, parliament yeah. they were just like a small small little party so a lot of a lot of politicians are looking at oh ndp's ndp's extremely aren't working so well either so uh although the party's mandate now gonna wedge like, in. yeah we're gonna be in the middle sort of yeah. take, take the best from both sides and, and 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 try to try to try to come out as a new party so uh steven mandel and decided to run for for their leader and my friend was part of that that campaign mm -hmm. for the Alberta Party's leader and yeah. went and volunteer over the weekend. And I'm glad Stephen Mandel won by a majority. Yeah. So now he's the Alberta uh, Party leader. Right. So during my my volunteer there, we were we were calling uh, party members uh, to see if uh, uh, we can count on their support. Yeah. And one of the party members that we called was a, uh, was a Chinese gentleman and and 
And his name was Xi Jinping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So he 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 was actually a a a a, a, a politi- not I guess uh, involved in, in in politics himself. As I can't remember wh- which part of Alberta, but he was uh, he was from a, a small town. Okay. But he's the only like Chinese or Asian uh, uh, politicians there. Uh, yeah. And then. We were asking him if he want to support Stephen Mandel, and because and and one of the one of the person that I was working with, uh, he was also Chinese, uh, so was trying to sell Stephen Mandel to him, saying that uh, we Stephen Mandel because we have a presence in the Stephen Mandel uh, campaign, and, and and we want to bring a um, louder voice for for the Chinese Chinese community, and because it's a new party, it's much <coughs> easier for us to do that. Yeah, and 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 and. So that person was mentioning how Stephen really uh, thinks the relationship with China is important, and, and trading in China is gonna help us moving forward because you know, China's um, growing e- economic. And then this guy just sort of came out of uh, nowhere and said, "Oh, I don't think that's a good idea because did you guys just heard?" And, and that news just came out that day. And oh we were, yeah. We were at the volunteer. I said, "She so just changed the constitution. Now he can he can be the." Um, president, the, pre- the president or pre- yeah. premier forever. Yeah. So now that's gonna change everything, and and, and China's gonna go downhill. Like so, he took a very negative stand stance on uh, uh, Xi Jinping doing that. Yeah. But um, obviously, we didn't. We, we never knew about that news, so that call call us call us COVID, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we just we, we we didn't know how to respond to that. Um, so yeah, so that's how I found out about it. But then again. Some people, when they hear certain things like that, what, what the politician did, they mm-hmm. instantly think, "Oh, now Xi Jinping is trying to be a dictator, and yeah. and, and and that's gonna be bad." But then again, if you really think deeper about it, what makes dictatorship bad is is when a dictator does bad things. Because mm-hmm. if you if you if you look at uh, Singapore, the 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 president in Singapore, he uh, his his name Lee something, but he was. He passed away a, a, few, a year or two ago. Okay. But everyone, you know, respected him. Everyone said, "Oh, he's a great mm-hmm. leader and all that." He was a hardcore dictatorship in Singapore. Oh, really? No, no, no one. Yeah, no had any problem with that, that, right? No one had any problem with that because he was a good dictator. Like, for for politicians, you're a leader. Yeah. And 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 you have power, regardless whether you're a dictatorship or a, or a, or a Demo, uh, demo, or from a democratic system. Right, right. So not right now, Trump is in power, so he has the political power to do certain things. Yeah. It's just that his power is limited. The reason why I think people limit that power is that you don't abuse it. Mm-hmm. So for dictators, if as long as you don't abuse your power and you do the things that are good for the public, nobody really cares about <laughs> whether it's a dictatorship or it's a or it's a, a fair, a yeah. But like the if you have the option, it's always gonna scare people. Yeah, and that because because we've had experience with that with so many bad dictators. Yeah. in the history, so uh, we, we, we 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 instantly refer back to oh, dictatorship is bad. That's just sort of ingrained in our mind. But that's not really the case. I'm not saying that he's not mm-hmm. he's not gonna be bad, a bad one, for sure. But I'm just saying that you know. You, Whenever things like that happens, don't just instantly think it's bad, and then and then and then base your action based uh, based on that because it's it's not a not a good result. Yeah, no, fair enough. Because like the, I think um, to put it in another way is like the idea itself is not bad. It's like the people who make it bad. Yeah, it's what they exactly, do with it. exactly. Yeah, but depends on what he does with it. Depends on your outlook on the people. <laughs> And yeah. it just kind of doesn't make it look so good that so many times throughout history it's always ended up bad. Mm-hmm. And then um, if if I I took a, um like an East Asian history class and then like a Chinese economics class in the U of A when I was there just as like interest mm-hmm. and um, talking about like whenever like a new dynasty came in China it was okay so then the new dynasty started because there was a good king mm-hmm. and then that same dynasty ended because. Then there was a bad, bad king. king yeah. yeah. So, so that's where your your good and bad example of dictatorship. If a good king comes, you have pros- prosperities yeah, and yeah, growth, yeah. and then and then a bad king comes, then you have you have you know just terrible terrible everything. That but that's just nature with 
you know concentrated power so when you do good you do extremely well mm. even even better than uh, democracy i think a lot of a lot of the poly- political yeah, depending students on the case, will you, you have so many more variables under your control yeah because yeah. you have full control everything's more efficient you, you can make decisions a lot quicker instead yeah. of instead of where uh in the democratic system you have to vote on everything so your your ability to to adapt to changes aren't as quick right mm. so i think that's one of the reasons why china has been able to grow so much faster is because they can uh, they can adapt to chain changes very quickly like if, if they see a certain technology is, is growing really well they can just instantly make make a change and adapt that technology instantly like for example mobile payment okay maybe that's not a result of, of, of uh, you know concentrated power but that's just going to show you that uh, the, the, the speed of the adaption that, that is over there where in the US I mean we have we've had so many mass shootings lately yeah. but for them to pass a gun control law yeah they have to put it up to debate after debate after debate yeah. everyone have to voice their own opinions so you have people you know protesting and all that where um, you know if the if the lead where in in a concentrated power uh, a place if the leaders realize that's the right thing to do they could just they could implement it right away yeah so again if if they implement something wrong then 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 it's going to go really bad but yeah. if they implement something right then that that speed gives you a, a, a advantage over over a lot of yeah i guess like it has its advantages and drawbacks oh yeah so yeah yeah, same with everything right and then just i think in general the like uh people's resistance to change is not really gonna um i guess like help you change the system too much in either way so it just kind of like keeps moving in the direction that the system was originally moving in Mm-hmm. Whether or not, whether that's like communism or whether it's democracy yeah. kind of thing, but I but I do kind of uh, hope to see they have a system of uh, not check a balance, but how to correct course if they are on the wrong path. Yeah, because we we have we haven't yet to see that, and, and if C does take take office for you know for forever long, and and things go bad, does he actually make the necessary adjustment to do the right thing? Yeah, that's something that's tough. I mean, we've seen we've seen leaders that can do that. I mean, after Mao uh, uh, passed away, yeah. Deng Xiaoping took power. Yeah, so, I mean, at that time he could have absolute power, just like Mao, but mm-hmm. he chose to not, and he cha- so he Deng, Deng was the the one that changed the constitution that you that that you know your your your, your premiers. Uh, is term bit term term limited to two terms uh five years each right so and then he he uh s- stepped down willingly for the for the for the for the next yeah next and people were like generally really happy with how he did for the whole time right yeah yeah but then he's but some people don't like him because he was he was also the leader when the TMM massacre happened. Oh right? yeah, so, that's true too. So that's so that's the thing with any politician. Sometimes they make decisions that don't look that great. Yeah, and sometimes they they make good decisions. You do nine years of good work, and then one single one, event one just erases it all. Just raises your <laughs> raises all the hard work that you did, right? So yeah, I, I just encourage people to take a, a, a more mutual stance or or look at things from a di- totally different perspective than you. Yeah, you see, see a lot. One more. thing I wanted to ask, uh, I don't know if you'll have uh, too much background or a say in it. It's, and I don't know if we will even have the time, but mm-hmm. I was, I took an interest in kind of like, um, uh, I guess like Tibet and the whole Buddhism thing, mm-hmm. and um, how, like in Buddhism, there's like there are three main like lamas, like the Panchen and the Dalai, and Dalai, the, oh, yeah, and then another one. Wow. Uh, I can't really remember, but you have knowledge in that. I don't, I don't even know too much about. Oh, okay, it. well maybe yeah. we won't spend too long on it, but I'll just like quickly go through it because yeah. we're coming to the end. But yeah, um, Tibet and like the whole like Buddhist religion is supposed to appoint like the next, uh, like find who the those next lamas reincarnated yeah, yeah, into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah and um, nice. yeah, they they initially they initially picked one like the Panchen Lama with some kid and then the Chinese government actually like plucked that kid away and put in their own pick oh yeah yeah Yeah, and then um, which doesn't really make sense so I was I was wondering if you had any insight on that because I don't really know too much about it I just know that it happened I think I I think I read about it and because because it did that Dalai Lama said that he he might not 
pass right. on the because the, the Dalai Lama has to pass on his his whatever title, title yeah. right to to the to the next newfound kid. So I think because to to protest that he he, he said he, he, he might be moves. the last Dalai Lama. Now again the the whole Tibetan thing, um, especially from uh, uh, the Western media, is portrayed as a, sort of a bad image for for, for for China. But then if you come from a, another uh, sorry another another um, perspective. If you were a country, uh, or you were a family, doesn't matter. You have a stepson or 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 or, 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 or a territory that ha- have a lot of people that didn't want to be part of the country. You can't. You still can't let them go. I mean, a case that we can relate is Quebec. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. they're they're French speaking. They think a lot of people they want to be sep- They want to be separate from the rest of Canada, but then you can't let it. You can't let it happen because if you let that happen. You know, Who's probably like yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's gonna think, oh yeah, oh, oh if Quebec can do that, we can do that too. When things go back, Alberta's gonna say, oh, we're doing really well. Forget forget the rest of Canada. We're yeah. gonna go independent. Then all of a sudden, you have right thirteen forward. countries instead. Yeah, of yeah. Then instead of one Canada, you have like 13, 13 countries. So that's that's just not the best option. So it's not that it's not that. Well, I can't speak for the Chinese government, but yeah. just from from any countries, they they can't they can't let any part. Of your your territory, just go and go and declare independence. Obviously, they want they that the local people want it. But yeah. then again, unless you actually live in Tibet and actually spoken to the, the Tibetan people, it it could be just the leaders of the Tibetan like the Dalai Lama. It could be just him wanting to take political power over the region. Mm. So he's promoting he's promoting independence. Right, because if if they're independent, he can come into power and be the leader of this of this area. I mean, who, who wouldn't want that, right? So if you if you look at what mo- what motivates him doing what he's doing, saying what he's saying, you, you might see this situation differently. So instead of just looking at uh, saying, oh, these people just want to be free, everyone wants to be free. You can't just let everyone go free, right? California is doing so well, then then a lot of the rest of the U.S. Can you just say let them be free and forget forget the the, the area that's doing bad? That's that's yeah. Not, no, I guess okay. I guess that that's fair enough because yeah. we, we like coming from the West, we don't really see that side of it, mm-hmm. even though like. Like you said, like you don't know exactly what the government is thinking, what they're doing, it, but just mm-hmm. seeing it from a different perspective kind of helps you, I guess, rationalize what they're doing. Because mm-hmm. you don't want to be like, oh man, my government's just full of idiots. What are they doing? And like, mm-hmm. yeah, which you don't know. That also could be the case, but it's also good to have like, okay, you want to, sh- I guess, like, think of a way that, like, they they're justified in doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you can never please everybody, yeah. no matter what you're doing. So. Yeah, and also from a from just like a regular citizen's point of view like people in china uh, outside of tibet we all love tibet this is like it's a very spiritual world for for anyone in china Mm -hmm. like people go to tibet as a as like a a backpacking trip or or Mm -hmm. one of the it's on a lot of people's to-do list so people people love tibet like they have nothing bad against it It, it's just that you know these political conflicts that happens people think oh oh, chinese people are like bad to tibetans that's that's not the case i'm sure the chinese government have done some bad things yeah but i'm also sure they have good reasons because i mean if you were a government why would you want to like oppress people for no reason there's a reason that there, there, there might be crackdowns but because there were uprisings and right, right, some right. of those uprisings might might, might be a reason might, might happen because of a reason that you don't understand mm. it, 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 yeah so it makes sense well we it's a complicated it, issue it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's getting juicier and juicier but we have to um, kind of shift away because we're almost at the end of their time for this episode but that yeah. was exciting time just flies I, I know think. right it felt like- time flies when you're like talking about something that you're interested in mm-hmm. passionate about things mm-hmm. that you've worked on because it just like that's you're like made up of everything you've done and your views so it's it's just mm-hmm. it feels mm-hmm. nice to kind of like let it all out yeah yeah so I mean what if it's just if you if only take away one thing from this podcast I would just say you know try to look at anything that from a from a different perspective try to try to 
understand there's a reason to the madness or whatever that you see and and once you once you dive deeper and understand more of that reason then you will understand because there's n there's no pure bad things going on everyone does things for a reason whether it's bad or good so just just keep an open mind instead of making uh, 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 like rash, a quick decision, quick decision yeah. on that's bad and that's good yeah. I mean, most things are are great right? <laughs> and again once you find that life's neither black nor white you'll see colors <laughs> <laughs> yeah so colors. on that note let's just uh, all, colors. <laughs> <laughs> all the colors yeah. so on that note we'll, we'll get to the the songs we picked today and um we chose three songs each out of a, a large list that we had to narrow down so if you want to start us off with your top three here the the first one that you chose is a very deep and meaningful <laughs> song but it's very tough to choose just three songs when yeah. uh, Brendan first talked to me about but then the first song for some reason came to my mind was never gonna give you up the <laughs> rick roll <laughs> song, rick roll song. <laughs> so I, I, I mean i thought i came up with it just uh, as, a, as a as a funny idea but then yeah. i th i think we decided to roll with it and to rick roll with it yeah rick, rick roll with it. and then uh, the second song i pick is rockstar by post malone whom I uh, really like as a new artist, and part of the reason why is because I saw I watched some of his, some of his interviews, and he's a very talented musician and mm. and and quite humble to be honest as a as a rap artist, but he can yeah. also sing and and compose at the age of twenty one, which he's twenty one. Yeah, he's oh 21, wow, so, I don't know which which amazing. Yeah, he he does look a lot older just because yeah, because like, yeah, and his like facial hair, his mustache that looks like two dogs kissing. Yeah, but then I, I love the song, so that's when, when I first heard it. And then was I learned more about Post Malone, it just intrigues me a lot more. So yeah, that's my second pick. And then my third pick uh, is Dreamscape by Double O Nine Sound System. I guess that's how you say it. And, <laughs> and it's just uh, a, a very uh, just a song that I love personally. Is it like a trance song or? Yeah, it's it, it's trance. So okay, yeah. uh, it sounds like a trance song. Yeah, it's it's, it's actually quite trancey, but it's uplifting trancey. So. Okay, cool. Okay, and and then I wrote down three songs too, but I think I'm gonna switch out two of them just based on like what we talked about, and also um, I like to include a K-pop song like with every mix I do, just to kind of um, keep myself in the loop with K-pop music, and then to yeah. kind of showcase it because I really like K-pop. Being music. true to Brenda's Asian roots. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> This is not Asian hello. Yeah. <laughs> well my wife is Korean, so I'm I'm halfway there. Yeah. Uh so the first song I chose is the music video, if you haven't seen it, it's so funny. <laughs> and even like the whole concept is hilarious. Yeah. It's Freaky Friday by Lil Dicky featuring Chris Brown. So if you haven't seen the music video, look it up. It's hilarious. And then I, I hope they don't flag it for you so you, you can't play it. Oh yeah, that's true. They might. But either way, like just because it's new, right? Yeah, if it's if it's if it's muted on YouTube, you can just uh, listen to the uninterrupted mix on Mixcloud that I always leave links for in the video description. Yeah. Um, and then if it's on the podcast, you'll listen to it uninterrupted either way. Um, so there's that one. There's also um, from my K-pop song. I wanna oh, what is it called? I think it's by EXO, and the song is called Monster. Oh. or monster mm -hmm. yeah and i don't want to like because I, I i've there's just so many groups so i can't remember like who exactly who is in which one would, sometimes yeah. but i think exo has like a couple chinese members and if not oh, them, yeah, yeah, they do they do uh, most of them parted yeah due to a like, yeah. contract conflict but then again i think they just think they have a better career options if going go solo China. in china yeah yeah mark is blowing up yeah i so. heard that's a, a thing that a lot of them do too is like just yeah. get on board with the first couple of years of a uh, exactly exactly k-pop group yeah, and then yeah. do their own thing get, get bigger back in china exactly. but this song uh, monster is really nice it's and then i'm gonna throw in um headhunters colors just because we talked about it <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah okay yeah. okay so so stay tuned for the mix in a couple minutes if you're on the podcast uh if you're watching on youtube and just click the next video or listen on Mixcloud if it's muted due to Freaky Friday. Yeah. We'll find out, I guess. But yeah. yeah, that brings us to the end of this episode of the Beat on Bits podcast, the show about passions, projects, and playlists. I had Alvin with me today. Um, say bye, Alvin. Well, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully, I did a good job that Brendan will invite me back on the podcast again. Yeah, of course. I, I like think I have a lot more to to contribute so. yeah i feel like everyone kind of had more to say and because we're limited to like under an hour just to not bore mm -hmm. people to death <laughs> it'd be cool to have like people come back on for sure especially yeah. talk more about some of these topics so i'll wrap it up here because we're really running out of time so if you like what you listen to and like what you watch please be sure to subscribe on youtube 
give it a like leave some comments yeah. leave some reviews on itunes stitcher any podcasting platform that you're on and then follow me at beat on bits on all of my socials facebook twitter instagram i'll see you there and uh thanks for listening again see you next time beat on bits <laughs> beat on bits